Uh, I traveled with Larry Hartzell for a number of years, and he was kind of my introduction to the international scene. And uh, I've just been around the JKD family for a very long time. I started with them in 79 and kind of moved on from there. And, and uh, my allegiance is to this Dan Renasano character, who is, we'll talk about him as the day goes on, but he's certainly, I would argue, the greatest martial artist of all time, but he's certainly the greatest martial artist of our time and the, the influence there. And so, what my job has become now is to come around to groups like yours who have experience and you guys are teaching people and whatever and try to fill in gaps, you know, just fill in uh, anybody who's either seminar trained or, or trains on, a, on an intermittent basis. What we get is we tend to get the middle to higher level material and then what was underneath it gets left out, you know what I mean, because we, we jump in and uh, you know, if you're with Paul's group, you go out for a weekend or whatever, and then we're, we're kind of left to struggle with what are the actual basics, how do we progress, how do we uh, form a school, you know, if you have a school, how do you form it, what's it supposed to look like. And so that's that's one thing that I can help you with. Um, he scheduled me for Sarong, it's actually not my thing, but I'm going to try to guess my way through it to see if I can see what I can remember. Um, what I'd like to do is concentrate more on uh, Pontukan and the Silat portion of that because that is really, really vital to what we do. Um, so we have two Filipino kids in here, so we've got to talk about Panatukan a little bit. Panatukan is interesting to me. Um, there's an internet squabble, you know, about whether it exists at all, right? Mm. There's, this, there's this sort of back and forth that goes on about, about, and I'm always faced with the dilemma of, do I listen to this guy on the internet, or do I listen to Dan Inasano, who's standing next to me saying it does exist? So. I'm going to go with the, the Mr. Insano thing because it sounds better than some guy on the internet. What happened in, um, right after World War II, the Filipinos who fought with America in the war were given citizenship. So much of the Filipino martial art, that's why I asked about your heritage, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, much of the Filipino martial art left the Philippines in 46. And um, because they were allowed to come in in the United States and, and work and do that kind of thing. So. Uh, you get many of the, the great Escrimadors and Kali people coming to the U.S. and a lot of them centered around Stockton, California because that's, that's where the, the work was, they were farm workers, they were this kind of thing. Uh, Sebastian Inasano, who is Guru's father, is the treasurer for all the Filipino community, so he's got the paycheck. Mm -hmm. So all of these guys end up at the Inasano house because they want to get paid. And over time, uh, Sebastian, who's a martial artist in his own right by the way, pushes them all on Dan. So he, he says, why don't you go train, you know, when he was a boy, he's called Danny, right? So we go train Danny, go train Danny. And so people like uh, Angel Cabalas, these kinds of people are at the house all the time and, and training Dan. And um, there's so many funny things that happen. I won't talk your day away, we'll get training. But uh, I watched in my school one guy explaining the Serata system, the Angel Cabalas system, right? to Guru Inasano, and he started talking, he's talking real fast, right, he's going, I don't know, we do this, we do this. what he didn't know is, Serato was a part of Dan Inasano's growing up every night, because Angel Cabalas would come over, he's, he's uh, Dan's father's drinking buddy, so they'd sit in the, in the living room and feed the kid, you know, bah, 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 bah. so he did that every night. Now, fast forward into the 2000s, this is a few years ago, I think it's 06 or 07, now you've got some kid explaining the Serato system to Dan Inasano which I thought was hilarious. And um, anyways, I, I got a lot of good uh, sound stories. So what we've done, and I was telling Glenn earlier, what we've done is divide the art into sort of six different areas. We separated out the Kali as weaponry. So, because I, I wanted to do the, the weapons part, and um, there are some people in my school that only want to do weaponry. And so I separated that out for them. They have a small empty hand component in that system, and we just call it a backup system. So should you end up without any weapons, now you have to go with a backup system of some sort. It's pretty basic. It looks a little bit like basic Pontukan. Then the Pontukan I put out as a separate thing because I really love that art. I think that's... Uh, I've always thought that Kali and especially Pontukan area was more JKD than JKD is. It's what JKD would have been if it had a chance to grow up. You know, Bruce was only 33. The thing's not been around all that long. I mean, the, the Filipino had... had uh, centuries to work on this and, and, and develop it, and so I, I, I like it. Um, when Panatukan comes to the U.S., it came in two forms, 
and, and we're going to try to concentrate on one of them, but I'm going to give So it comes in a sport form. And this is because our military guys, uh, what you call the Buffalo Soldiers, was our black regiments. And then the naval boxers from the Navy got in with the Filipinos while they were over there. And uh, this is during uh, American occupation of the Philippines, which starts in 1899. And then they, they sort of trade ideas, basically. They trade ideas. The one thing that, that, the, that this is how Guru always says, because the one thing the Americans gave them was boxing gloves. Because before that, it was a piece of rope. Sometimes, if, we, if it's a grudge match, we put the seashells in the rope, and now we go. Okay, so it's a very careful game, right? And uh, they say the pit, so you, put, bah, 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 and you wrap it around like that. It's similar to the old uh, um, Muay Thai. It's similar to old Muay Thai, but they have the boards here instead of just uh, the, the rope. Anyway, so it comes here partly as a sport, and then you get what they call a great Pinoy boxing era. Pinoy boxers are, I think, late 1920s up to maybe the 40s, somewhere in there, maybe late 30s. Um, and that's people that you hear the names like, like Flash Lordy, Kid Gallivan. There's a bunch of names here. And, and they, were, uh, they were Mani Pacquiao back then. That's, that's who they were. And these guys were stick fighters, but they knew they could make a living with boxing. That's why they did. So they had weaponry background. So anyways, that comes here. Now the other line, and this is where we're going to bring in this guy named Johnny LaCosta, so, um, is, is more of a true martial art line. It means that it still has all of the martial aspects. It didn't take anything out to make it a sport. And that's where you get, uh, you know, if you've been around Paul Vunak's stuff, I would say 60 to 70 percent of what he does, maybe more is calm. Okay, even though sometimes he'll say it's John Fon, and that's sort of a tribute to Bruce and Dan, but that's call it what he's doing. And so when you look at the, the way that they're using the elbows, the way they're using the forearms, that's basic Panatukan, that's, that's what that is. And so this, this guy, Johnny LaCosta, is famous for having gone from the north all the way to the south in the Philippines, um, and taken different systems. And it, it, he did that at a time when you weren't supposed to be able to do that. You know, especially in the south. The Muslim sector, they, they have places down there, and I don't know how much you guys know about the history, but they have places down there where, where they say nobody goes, because when they go, they don't come back. Yeah. So I, I have a funny theory about this. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And you go there and south, yeah, they, people don't come back from there. And so uh, you have two people. Villa Braille goes down there, and that's where the Princess Josephina is. And then you have Johnny LaCosta who goes down there and comes back. But I have one theory that, of why people might not come back is maybe it's just that nice down there. <laughs> it's like Hawaii or something, you know, they go down there, I'm not going back, maybe the women are beautiful, I don't know, <laughs> Denmark. Um, and this is the area now, by the way, if you fast forward now, uh, Tuan Leo Gahi and some of these other people are training our soldiers now, because they're still fighting there. And this is where Abu Sayyaf is and those other groups, right, they're still kidnapping people and, and whatever, so, uh, and if you're interested, the, the, because of the terrain and the way the thing is fought, it's still a lot of blade work. To this day, even in the day of automatic weapons, there's a lot of blade work. So our soldiers now are learning the blade work so that they can go and chase this uh, Abu Sayyaf group around. Okay, so you have Johnny LaCosta comes into the country. Johnny LaCosta has one student, and his name is Dan Insano. And uh, uh, you will see on most of our stuff, this, but you will see LaCosta Insano system or something like that, mm -hmm. Insano LaCosta system, because he credits Johnny LaCosta for a lot of this. Okay, then later you get people, uh, you guys know a name, Ted Lukai. Okay, Teddy Lukai was one of the JKD guys, right? His father is a guy named Lucky Lukai, who happens to be a very prominent uh, Filipino martial artist. He was a Panatukan man, basically. But he brought the art in as Suntakan. Okay, so Suntakan, when they got to America, Shotokan was already big. You know, so people, you know, Shotokan was big, right? So they looked around, they said, well, if we call this Suntakan, it sounds like Shotokan, we don't want to call it this. So they went with, well they went with two things, you'll hear the word Pangamut, that, that word comes out a lot, and then Panatukan is the one that Dan chose, and uh, I think he chose it, I think the other, anyways, but I'll give him credit for it. And so they, they went forward with that, and then you have other people start feeding into this. Uh, uh, ben Margusa, Flora Villa Braille, Maximento, all of these people feed knowledge into this, and so, in the end, you get this Dan and Asano character who's, who's soaked up all of this knowledge and culture, and then he comes around and gives it to you. That, that's the deal. So, which, the end of my speech here is, it's a lucky time for us to be martial artists. That, that's the thing, it's, it's a really lucky time. 
because, you know, I, I, I told you before, I don't know how much we would know about Filipino culture if it wasn't for Dan and Son. I usually start with the left lead, and then we switch out from there into any lead. So you can always switch out, but we start in the left lead. Okay, so first thing I'd like you to do, just hold the jab right at his nose level, and I want you to just step like that. Okay, so that's the first one. See, they just salute, like that. Here, like that. Or sometimes they say coming, which is just a shield. Okay, so just shield the thing, shield the thing like that. Just move your feet, move your feet. That'll get you warmed up again, we'll get moving, okay? Just put the jab right there. Do, do sets of 10. How about this? Sets of 10. If we just step up, it's a boxing arm, so obviously they're going to start left lead. And we're going to switch out from this one into all kinds of different things. And okay, so the first thing is just basically a lesson in uh, structure. Okay, so when he jabs, why don't you go like that, that's number one. When he jabs, when you hit it like this, and go like that. And when he jabs, when you pass, you know, not and then pull out. Okay, so those are the first three we do. So if we go like that, so this one goes in here like that. Sometimes it's just a blind. So I'm just putting this up here like that so he can't see this one coming. You know, it's, it's sort of like that old thing. Boom! <laughs> Fell for it. So that's number one is like that. Number two is we crash it here. It's not my favorite, but because sometimes when you get hit here, you get rocked back. But it's okay. This, this is good here like that. So, and then the last one is we, we say the word pasuk. Okay, pasuk, is a, a pasuk is an attachment. Okay, so like, like uh, in the JKD, we would say reference point. Like that. So we just try to get to a reference point that we understand and that we can work from and then trap the hands from there. That's, that's the first one. So if you parry and hit like that, that's number one. If you grill the fist here, and this, sorry, and if you tap here and then mouse the bicep, go back to this. Okay, then we can work from there. Those are three. And what it is, is it's gradients of the lead hand. So number one, the lead hand is here. Number two, the lead hand is here. Number three, the lead hand is here. So I varied my structure by one, two, three. The traditional ones look like this. Now you go here, blah, blah, and then they have, they have like that. So if I go here, like that, see, but you can't get... Yeah. Nobody can get away with this now. You know, this generation, you stand in front of somebody like this, you're just going to get hit. So, you know, if, if I go like this, see, this is because I'm going to go here. Like, there's a system, um, the, uh, the, the case system. Are they? Yeah. I think you just get hit. I would just get hit. <laughs> but the, the, uh, the Casey system, the Justo, the, he put together the thing with just the elbows, which is a good tactic, by the way. But it's just a, it's one part of college. It's one part. So when they go like that, see that just means that they're going to use the elbows coming in like that. And uh, I think you should have all these. Right? So, so if your hand is on the outside, we would parry and go up. If your hand is in the center, we would hit it here. If your hand is out here, you make sure that you touch this rear hand. So what we do is sometimes they'll punch it. Sometimes you just punch this hand just to delay it. Then crack that bicep and then again whatever you're going to do. Sometimes they'll tap it or pat it here or here. And sometimes the possum is just like that to cover the eye, and then go here, and then off you go. Okay? All right, let me see that just on the lead hand if I, if I could, right? Just